Hey and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is about Victor and Venus OS 3.30 update. Let's get started. In today's video we'll talk about the change log again, we'll do the update on the test Raspberry Pi 4 and then we'll do the update on my production, not test anymore, production Raspberry Pi 3. And what I want to point out this time, I have two more components connected since I told you I will do that next time when they um, publish an update. And here's the update. It's quicker than I expected, as always. But uh, I have connected a MultiPlus and also a relay board to my Raspberry Pi 4, which is my test device. And also, I want to show you a few things in Node-RED, what I configured, and all those components, MultiPlus connection, as well as Node-RED introduction. And also the relay board, maybe there's a video up there for the relay board already. But um, everything else, I will publish over the next couple of days and weeks um, videos about this stuff. But right now, that's the setup. I will show you, go through everything what's connected before we do the update, so you have an idea what's happening before and after uh, on both of the Raspberry Pis, obviously. So let's get started with the Venus OS 3.30. Here you can see the official post, Venus OS 3.30, peak shaving for ESS, that's what they call it. There's a highlight or there's a summary you can see. And please, as always, stop the video if you want to read through it more carefully than I'm just jumping through. Because not everything applies to me. So here we have the release notes, which was released on March 19th. It was my birthday. Thank you, everyone. And we can see there are the highlights already. They were talking about ESS. So uh, I marked a couple of things in yellow, which I think are important for me at least. But we can see they, ha they do have a Marine MFD app, which I do not have. And we'll see what it is. Actually, I have not done any research on that part. So maybe you want to educate myself. No, it isn't. Maybe you, maybe you want to educate me. Anyways, uh, generally speaking, here we see the Ruby wireless temperature sensors at low battery warning. This is pretty cool. I thought it is already included. Looks like not. Uh, so I do have a Ruby. I have to see if it's still running, which is set up for my um, propane tank here in the US. Then we do have the MPPT RS fix uh, for spurious low and high battery voltage alarms. Was introduced with the version 3.20 of Venus S. Then we have uh, for Servo GX. Um, we running Raspberry Pi, as you know. Servo GX is you don't remember, we never tested it <laughs> because we use Raspberry Pi, Servo GX, that's the native Victron solution instead of Raspberry Pi. Then we have to generate a start stop. Some of you might use it. We have Modbus TCP registers for multis and quattros for the UPS function, okay. And also something for Orion XS. All right, still not in the shelves, at least for me, still waiting for it. Then we have the Venus OS Large for Node-RED, and that's something which I think is interesting in case you are into Node-RED. We'll touch base on uh, one thing at the end of the video to test it, or maybe in the middle. And also for uh, Signal K server. So those two down here apply to the Venus OS Large image. That's all, so I hope i um, read through it, pause the video. I try to copy paste everything into the description as always, might not work 100% because of those little signs up there. We'll see. Nevertheless, we will start with this unit. Um, and let me switch to menu F first. So this one is running setup helper as always. Oh, and by the way, I read a couple people had already issues with updating. So we'll see how this performs on my devices if there are any issues and we'll see. Um, so anyways, we do have connected three things or actually two. One, one wire temperature sensor as well, and it's installed through the setup helper. One multi plus two, as you can see here, there is not, not yet, a battery connected. It's just purely connected to the wall outlet, nothing else. It's, uh, well, of course, it is connected to the Raspberry Pi, to Venus S here, as you can see. And we have a Raspberry Pi processor temperature also installed through the setup helper. When I go on pages, then we can see what we have here. And we can see this is the MultiPlus here on the left. Uh, no battery at all because it's right here in front of me. I do have a relay board connected though. Uh, I have to go here. And the relay board, um, I don't know if you can hear it when I 
turn on the relay uh, three in that case or turn it off video is mentioned up there this is another one I, t I had two different relay boards and I decided for one at the end I only have the three I did configure it um, to uh, the generator stop uh, to a temperature alarm turning on and off kind of a fan if you wanna or a heater whatever you wanna configure here and then just this this one is just on and off and I'll show you in my node red now because node red which comes with a large image is installed on this one that means and the video is coming out so stay tuned for that subscribe to the channel by the way that might help you to see the video when it's out I was talking about the two temperature sensors so we do see the temperature Raspberry Pi processor and temperature one wire so you can see I have a couch here uh, I have it additionally posted on here temperatures then I do have or oh, I did talk about the first one the relay 3 so it means what you just saw here relay 3 this one on and off going in here on and off you might hear it uh, let's see when I turn it off sorry when I turn it on it's on here when I turn it off here it's not but it doesn't turn it off again because it's off anyways there are some this is a testing phase and I want to talk about that in the separate video just to get an idea that's what it looks like we continue with the firmware update now which means going to the settings going into firmware we have installed the last version version 3.22 going into online updates and we can see down here is it already let me see update available let's check again you can see we can check again so press check you can see 3.3 .3. and we'll install it double click here and I'll be back when it's rebooted it's the easiest and quickest I would say all right let's see if we can come back yes there's a connection it's quite interesting so I do have connected the display in the meantime as well which I didn't mention earlier but I was waiting for it to come back and display this which is not a case but I can see setup helpers installed so that means something must have been or oh, gotten messed up regardless uh, let's switch to settings let's go to firmware really quick we do have installed version 3.30 so what does it mean really good question let's see how far we with the setup helper first before checking anything else package manager checking for downloads and updates let's see the active packages setup helpers installed GUI mods we'll check in that in a second shutdown monitor GPO setup look at that as well and the temperature is installed as well so going to pages we can see that's a relay board turning on turning off works for relay 3 same for relay 1 which has a little delay here that's fine let me check here let me refresh yeah node red doesn't work good to know we can see um, here the setup helper did a good job with uh, the GUI mod that's good this one's not configured let's go back here interesting so we do not see let's see if we can go to where is it what do you guys what I did Ooh. let's see didn't I check on that that was not good I think I deleted my entire installation uh, that's not good all right let's install the launch as well in here um, it should have been already installed which is weird that it didn't recognize it because I was using node red let's test it I'll be back when it's installed all right let's see so I'll reconnect here settings Fumo 3 you know, 330 now it says large okay but there's still some, something available, which is quite interesting. So it's, it looks like it's not installed fully yet. I was wondering about that. So something's off with this update. I'd say at least a little bit. Let's see. I do not have any node red, node red activation possibility here. So it looks like it did not install correctly. So we'll retry again with the large. Let's see what's happening.
Okay, that's the point where it did just reboot early on me and then nothing was installed. So we'll see if that works. And now I'm wondering if I actually did have selected large image earlier. I don't know. Anyway, you you might have seen it in the video already, so and I'm as well posted it. But let's see where we're at here. Oh yeah, the number's already way higher with 62%, so hopefully it does install now. Still, I did lose the, I think we called it headless display, so the configuration that it's displaying on the display itself. So let's see what we're getting with this. Yeah, now we're at 66% and I can see that it stopped and it's rebooting right now here on the display and just clicked with the rebooting of the relays as well. So, let's see what's happening. Not only I destroyed my Node-RED installation because I didn't back up it, we'll talk about and touch base on that in the other video. <laughs> So you avoid my mistakes, but yeah, it's not not looking good for, in my opinion at the moment. It's back up. Let me refresh. Let me refresh. It should be back online. All right, we're back online. It's still having the setup helper installed, which is good. But we can see online updates. It says the large. It did not install at all. No. Not good. And by the way, I had to reinstall. Oh, because I was playing around actually. I installed a brand new version, uh, 3.22, I believe on here, so it's not from the previous updates, in case this is having some issues or not. So, what are we doing? We are doing, because I, I wanna get back my headless, my display, um, which I currently don't have. So it means, as you remember, you need to um, enable a couple of things to for the SSH, for example. Now you need your putty and you need to know your IP address. So when you're doing all the updates, like I did in the browser, you should know it. And then you will have putty putty here. And you have the password, hopefully you know it. Next step, I'll just turn on the headless and we'll see if it helps and do the reboot. If that was all which was just destroyed, great. If we have to reconfigure everything in terms of the headless configuration would be bummer and I would definitely not recommend a large image here at the moment. Uh, this is highly depending on what's the result. But uh, it doesn't look good to be honest, this update, something's off. Usually um, I feel like the big trends are way better. We'll see. Yeah, that looks way better. That looks way better. So it's booting up still and I can see it again. So I only had to push out the command, which I will post also in the description below, which activates the headless <laughs> configuration. And it looks like, oh, that's good to know. Okay, it looks like when I use my finger, um, I'm tapping on pages, but it does actually tap here on change to dark mode. <laughs> so uh, I also need to do this. So it means we'll, we'll, start, we'll restart the session. First, what we need to do is deactivate the display again, reboot, and then we will send a command which will uh, calib which will calibrate the display again. Hopefully, that helps. So we should be back. Yeah, we are back. All right, let's restart the session. And this is a command. Oh no, that's not a command. This is the command. Copy and right click on the mouse. Okay, that's why. So it looks like we have to entirely reconfigure everything I did. Okay, that's a bummer. Um, I would definitely say don't do this update. I was more excited uh, about this one, so that's a huge bummer. So what I'm doing now, I will set it up that it's back to normal again. I will have my touchscreen enabled so that will work again and also I will revert to the last version 3.22 which means we'll do that together. Go in settings, go in firmware, go in hopefully stored backup firmware but there's nothing nothing stored. That's not good. That is a huge bummer. All right so something really messed up with with the version 3.0. That's a bummer. Okay what I will do I will stop the video here. Um, 
I don't know, if you made it until here, I would not recommend doing the update at the moment. I'll figure out and try a couple updates uh, myself as well and go back to 3.22. Yeah, I, I think I will try to make a follow-up video on this version. If you have any questions in the meantime, let me know. Tschüss!